there, fellow custodians and custodians, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Just sitting here on a little lunch break. Uh, you nothing like having a little peace and quiet in your own closet, right? Anyway, today's video, we're going to talk about basically how to clean a classroom. Um, very simple concept. Sweep a classroom, dust mop a classroom, and mop the floor. That's basically all there is to it. Uh, I'll tell you something I really like to do. I like to have an extra long broom handle because it really helps to get under desk, especially if your teachers forget to put the chairs up. So I got a little footage here for you today on how I clean a classroom. Enjoy. So this is a uh, way it's supposed to be done right here. These teachers, you know, I notify all my teachers that chairs should be put up and ready for their classroom to be swept and mopped. And uh, this guy right here has got it going on. You're gonna go into classroom sometimes, just left one that the uh, chairs are not put up on the table and it really makes it difficult to clean around, but I do not put chairs up on tables. They, they know what they're supposed to do. And so, I just go around it if they don't. They just don't get as good a quality job. So, let's sweep and mop this classroom. What I like to do first is I like to go around all the edges. Let me get down here. What I like to do is go around all the edges first with a broom, and then I sweep up from under the desk with a broom next. I have a really long handle broom where I can really reach up under there. I go on both sides of the desk. That way that I get everything good. Now that I have the floor swept around the desk and around the edges, I take a microfiber, kind of like dust mop. Some people may use a regular dust mop, but I found out like a uh, 16, 24 inch dust mop works best, but what I do is I go around the whole classroom now and sweep up everything that I have swept around the walls and out from under the desk. And I just sweep that up and I have to start kind of around and make a pattern around the room. So now I'm out the back side of the room and I kind of hit this stopping point and I go back and kind of work my way around because every classroom is set up different that's for sure Now I'm picking up right where I left off and I'm working my way now. Now on this side of the room toward the door. We wanna work from the back of the room toward the door. That way we know every part of the room has been dust mopped. Just like before, where we left off, all trash now is right at the door. These teachers in their frou-frou. Oh, mercy. 
They think this place is a house and they can just put cute stuff in it and us custodians knock it off. Oh, that first thing I knocked off, it was just an Auburn University War Eagle sign. <laughs> it didn't really matter, no way. Real tight. Mopping the floor, it's very important to keep your mop flat on the floor. We don't want to be mopping like this. You're going to wear yourself out. Take that mop and lay it flat and let it fan out. Mop under your desk. Same thing, you start at the room, work your pattern around the room, toward the door. That way you won't be walking in where you've already mopped. is this. Yes, you will probably have to re-dip your mop during a room cleaning. So make sure you squeeze it out good, but see how that mop's flat? This mop has two sides, okay? So, say you get a good part of the room mop, though you notice it's getting dry or it's like it's dirty, flip that mop over flat and use the other side. To save you a trip to the mop bucket because we all know we want to take as less steps, be efficient as we can, but take as less steps a day as we can. This so room here is done. I normally don't carry a janitor's card in the classroom. I don't know, maybe some schools or places you work may require you not to have your janitor's card sitting out in the hall, but I normally don't. The reason I did today is because of uh, video purposes and shutting the door of the classroom. So uh, I knocked a lot of stuff off with this card. I'm not used to doing that. And sometimes I do back into shelves and stuff. But anyway, after cleaning the classroom, you may say, well, how many times or how often do I change my mop water? Well, that's kind of common sense. You can look at your water and tell if it's getting dirty. Uh, if it's like it's getting really soiled, it's time to change classrooms. I usually get two to three classrooms per bucket of water. And that also depends on the size of your classroom. So just use some good old logical horse common sense on that one. I mean, uh, this, this is not rocket scientist work. So, uh, you know, I try not to insult anybody's intelligence. Everything that I do on here is what you see is who I am and and my personality comes out in different ways. I have a warped sense of humor. But anyway, I try to give people knowledge and uh, or understanding or advice and if they want to take it, that's fine. I don't know everything and I will tell you that many times on this channel. But uh, I've got another classroom to clean here in just about 10 minutes. So, uh, let's change the mop bucket water. It looks good. So I'm going to wait after this last classroom of the day before I clean up my mop. Well, I hope you found that video to be helpful in some way, somehow, maybe on an idea of how to sweep a classroom. I do apologize for maybe some of the camera angles. I will work on that as I get set up on better cameras, but this is something that I'm just getting started to kind of see how it goes. Uh, trial and error type thing so i hope you find this uh channel something that you're interested in yes i'm out of breath because i'm a fat boy from alabama and i love to eat fried food and i have high cholesterol so anyway i uh i hope you do hit the subscribe button below if you see something you like and as i always say you go out there and you clean something scrub some toilets sweep some floors take out some garbage because i can promise you in five minutes it's gonna need doing again have a great day